Right, welcome to my review of Invisible Man. This film's fantastic. I'll say straight off the bat, I had a great time with this. And it was, for me, one of those films which I'd seen on the lead up to and I'd looked at the trailers and I just thought, I think this is a wasted opportunity. But I hold my hands up, like I always do, forgive me. Uh, and I'll admit when I'm wrong, and I was definitely wrong about this. It's by no means perfect, but it's a great film. And for February, a February horror film, go out and watch it. You'll have a blast. Like, you really, really will. Um, although, side note, I went to a matinee showing today. Fat bitch in Swindon Theatre, right? That's where I went, Swindon Theatre. Get off your phone. Get off your phone. Anyway, rant to one side. Um, let's get into it. So we'll talk non-spoilers first, then I'll give you fair warning, uh, and we'll get into spoilers again with a fair warning. Now, Lee Winnell is perhaps best known now, currently, for Upgrade. He will become best known for this. Now, he worked on Upgrade with Stefan Dushio, Dushko, Dushio, his cinematographer. And between the two of them, they have definitively an artistic flair. Like, it, it's categorically, it's a Lee Winnell film. And obviously, Stefan uh, Dushio. Now, again, for Upgrade, they did some really clever, like, real, real clever camera angles. Uh, like, they had, like, an iPhone strapped to the chest of the actor, and the, uh, a camera would track him on a gimbal, and all of this stuff. And it was, it was, it was, it was practical camera work. It wasn't um, CG or CG camera angles and things like this. It was great. And it carries over to this film carries over to this film and like I say Lee Winnell if he's gonna go down in history as anything it'll be something like this it, it he's really really good with this and I think it needs to be praised much more so than what most people are praising uh, about any of the films and that nowadays is because we have too many cookie cutter directors most films all look the same right or they have uh, a vision which just looks fine it looks you know Kind of paint by numbers, I guess you could say. Now, this film is very clearly a Lee Winnell film. Now, in a sea of movies which could be directed by committee, for all we know, it stands out, and that needs to be praised. The fact that, you know, he, he genuinely has an artistic vision and it actually comes out really, really good. Now, obviously, uh, Invisible Man, uh, there's not an awful lot of the cast to really delve into. We've got Elizabeth Moss and Aldis Hodge. Those are kind of the two mainstay characters. So uh, Elizabeth Moss plays the wife of, uh, what's the guy's name? Oliver Jackson Cohen, I think the chap's name is, the actor. Uh, plays the wife of this chap who is a optical specialist, a genius on, on optics. And she escapes and escapes with the help of her sister and gets put up in Aldis Hodges, her sister's friend's house. So that's why he's one of the mainstay characters. So between the two of them, that's really where the story is focused and both actors do a fantastic job. Really, really good. There's some genuinely touching moments between Aldis Hodge, his daughter, and Elizabeth Moss, um, which it's heartwarming, like it's actually touching, you know, the the tension is palpable in this film, but it's interspersed with these really nice tender moments, uh, and you do go, oh, well, that's nice, and it needs it as well, because a film, it just cannot be uh, a non-stop tense thriller, like, you, you know, your, your bum cheeks can only clench so much, um, and it's good to have those moments, because it makes you really appreciate the horrific moments more, uh, and that leads me on to the next thing about this film, uh, is, yeah, like, it, it's, you do get a sense of heavy, heavy atmosphere, heavy, heavy dread, um, ironic, there's obviously a lot of knives in this film, but you could cut the atmosphere with a knife, it's very, very good, uh, and I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll, I'll hold my hands up and I'll say when I'm wrong, I was wrong about this film, I saw all the, the marketing for this film and I thought this is going to be poo, it's going to be absolutely terrible, um, I will say the marketing actually did it no justice, uh, and I'll touch on it a little bit more in spoilers, but there is a way that you could have marketed this film where you didn't spoil anything, uh, and some of the trailers did spoil stuff, but because this film doesn't actually rely on the moments that are seen in the trailers for their, their atmosphere and dread factor, Universal missed, because uh, it is Universal, and Blumhouse, they, they really did miss a trick with the trailers and marketing for this film. They could have made it, they, they could have made it out to be much, much, much more tense 
uh, well, a good represent a good representation of what it actually is. Um, cameo from my dog. Uh, and and they could have hidden some of the things which they revealed in the trailers. So that's one of my main gripes with this. And it's not a gripe with the film. It's a gripe with whoever did the trailers and marketing for it. Because they, they really did miss a trick. Uh, and it's a shame. Because they didn't have to. This film, under tension, would have marketed itself. And, it, and it's, it's... I think what's so great about this film... And the pacing isn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination. It's it's very, very slow at the start, which I like. I actually really appreciate that um, because we are, uh, I mean, it's quite literally the sense of, well, someone's there. Maybe they're not. Maybe they are. Ooh. And, and it's fantastic. It, it Lee Winnell has allowed the story just to, just to breathe. Uh, I've used this phrase before. He just allows the story to breathe and the film to grow naturally rather than rushing through it. Um, but that's that's really, really good. But then we kind of race to the end, and it's this kind of big crescendo at the end, which I guess it's standard kind of third act tropes. Um, but I would have liked more of the slow burn, believe it or not. Uh, and I'd be I'd be interested to hear what you guys think about that. But it's again, it's a minor gripe with the film. Some of the because there are digital effects in this film, some of them are not perfect. They're not perfect, but they're not bad. And this film relies very little on those it is mainly and one of the best 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 things about this film and i think why lee winnell and his cinematographer stefan adesio or i can't gonna butcher that name but whatever was so absolutely the right choice for it is lee winnell it just takes his time so for for, for example's sake right we have this sense of foreboding that someone is in the room behind us right and the camera will track certain individuals leaving the room. But then it will pan back to an empty space. There's no movement. There's nothing there specifically. But you know full well that it's doing that. Because implied is that there's someone there. And there's also some really good uh, choices of framing. So where they've placed the camera and framed the shot. right? And that again implies that there's someone there it's just these subtle little bits and pieces here and uh, but they use so expertly so 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 expertly that you it's it's a genuine joy to watch from a technical perspective and and just how they allowed it to flow and stuff it's fantastic uh, the action in this film is great and again it's obviously not as bombastic as upgrade but it's in the same vein toned down and repurposed I guess repackage that sort of action style and camera act, camera plus action style for this film, and it works really, really well. Um, everyone does a great job. The I will say the sound design is really, really good, but the closing credits track is really loud, and I don't know if that was just me, but it was really loud. So soundtrack, score, everything great. No rando just jump scares for the sake of jump scares either. Again, it was a very nicely constructed film. End soundtrack, very odd. Really, just way, volume was just crazy. I don't understand what happened there. Might just be my theatre, in fairness. Um, now, outside of all of that, we'll kind of touch on spoilers. So, because there's not really anything, you must go watch it. Basically, just go watch it, it's great. But we'll touch on spoilers now. So here's your, your kind of big spoiler warning. We'll talk about some twists and turns and things like that. Um, but definitely go and watch it. It's well worth the price of admission. I had a great time with it. Uh, and it's good now to start to see, because we've had a slump. It's good now to start seeing some good films again. Because um, I'm just known for the guy that just shits on films non-stop and complains. But unfortunately, it's just because we've not had very good films recently. Um, so it's good to see some good movies coming back out. And hopefully we'll kind of continue that trend. So let's move on. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Okay, so the trailers did... It is a suit, right? They, they spoiled it that it is a suit. And this is what I mean... With such amazing atmospheric scenes in this film, they didn't have to do that. Um, and this film will get such good word of mouth. They really didn't have to do that, and they they oh god they missed the they missed the trick with it. It really annoys me that they did that because it it made it look real dumb. There's a lot more to this film. There's even shot out of sequence when they say you know i've left you all this money under the proviso that you don't get yourself sectioned basically now that's that that scene is in displays between two different scenes 
at the start and the end of the movie. So it's setting up a false narrative for what you're about to watch. And so one of the things which I had thought of was, well, this looks dumb because what is it going to be? It's going to be this guy. Why, why would you go to all that trouble to make him this suit, faking your own death, to then just go and terrorise your, your, your ex-girlfriend or ex-wife or whatever, right? But it's not, it's not framed like that in the movie. So they, the, whoever's behind the trailers on this film, Universal, just don't get them back. They're not good. They made this film look stupid in the trailers and spoiled it. And it's better than that. It's worth more than to blow your load on it. Like, it really is. This is the unfortunate nature of a film where I guess they didn't have so much confidence in it that they wanted to reveal some of the money shots. Um, laughable because it gets covered in white stuff. Money shot. Um... But they didn't need to do that. They should have had more confidence in this film because it's very, very good. And it's going to get great word of mouth. Uh, anyone, I, I have 99% of people going to love this movie. They really are. So, obviously we thought, you know, he's built a suit, right? He did, he did build a suit. It's in the trailer. Um, big old golf ball head. But he's working with two people. So it's his brother as well as him. And... He kind of sets his brother up to get killed. Definitely, probably, maybe. Uh, and he gets killed at the end. So, it's interesting for the future of this of this property, if they're going to do another one, because she's got the suit now. Um, there are some weird things which don't make an awful lot of sense. This is the thing with films, is there's always plot holes, right? If anyone says anything else with respect to, to movies and stuff, there's always plot holes. There is always plot holes, but it's whether the film is engaging enough to distract you from them. So obviously he's wearing this suit, which is just full-blown cameras, right? Which I guess cameras and then it reflects the opposing image on it. However, when he gets covered in paint, because we now know that it's literally just a million cameras. And I can't remember what the fear is, but the phobia of holes, ooh, tr tr trick a fear or something like that. You guys are going to hate this movie. Uh, there's some shots where it's like, ooh, it looks like beehives, you know, little... Uh, bees coming out. Uh, anyway, and because we know what it is, in that shot, it shouldn't have just covered him and looked like that. It should have disrupted the whole field, if that makes sense. But because of the film being so good, you just don't think about it too much. And, that, you know, it, there's plot holes in every movie, but this was engaging enough to, to not consider it so much. It was a good film. I had a real good time with this. Um, there was no one else that was especially standout, really. The opening, the first act is solid. It's so, so good. It really is. Really, really, really good. But like I say, because she's now got the suit, where'd you go with it? The Invisible Woe Man at the end. I mean, I don't really know where you'd go with it now. But I hope they don't. I hope they just have it as a one and done. Universal is trying so hard to get this dark universe off the ground. They just need to stop. Um, I think this is the way forward. Like create just singular movies. This is this was good. One and done. It's good. So I'd love to hear your thoughts if you've seen it. Let me know down below in the comments if you are new here. Do hit subscribe. Step to date on the world of pop culture movie news by hitting the bell notification icon. Uh, I reviewed Ultra Carbon Season 2. I'll leave it linked above. Please do go and check that out. Another positive review by me. Oh my god. Um, shock horror. Check it out. That was a really good season as well. I really enjoyed that. Anyway, thanks so much. Take care.